All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores. I have a big time injury update for the game tonight. We have wide receiver Jahan Dotson returning. We're going to talk about some really interesting stats that he still has an honest chance to win Offensive Rookie of the Year, at least as far as the receiving group goes from the crop of rookies from this past draft. Also, Chase Young will not play, and we're going to break down everything that's going on with him. Will he be available to play next week? Are the commanders optimistic about it? And I do want to briefly briefly talk about that fifth year option that he has coming up in due time and then of course we got to do a full-time injury breakdown for the commanders and eagles who's playing who's not playing who's questionable who's in the maybe in between area but before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you pull up every sunday for the live play-by-play -play analysis of every commander regular season and postseason game i'm gonna speak it into existence of course we didn't play sunday as in yesterday we played tonight as in monday so make sure you pull up tonight 8 p.m pull up to this exact channel i will be doing my live play-by-play -play analysis and breakdown of everything going on in this eagles game we're gonna laugh and learn together man make sure y'all pull up and let's get it All right, so starting with Jahan Dotson, well, if y'all remember, last game we saw him was against the Cowboys and that 10 to 25 loss that we took to them. He had four targets, three receptions for 43 yards and a touchdown, but he did not make it out of the game unscathed. He's been dealing with a hamstring issue and those tend to be the type of injuries that linger for a long time. But if they're very confident in his ability that he, but if they're very confident in his recovery and feel like he's good to go and there's no potential to re-aggravate his hamstring situation then i trust him i trust our training staff to make the right decision again we haven't seen him since dallas and he was our best red zone target literally even though he's one of the shortest receivers on the entire team he's been our best red zone target before he got hurt he was leading the nfl in touchdowns versus man-on-man -man coverage also before he got hurt him and stefan diggs were leading the entire nfl in touchdown receptions out of the entire nfl he was leading rookies easily he was leading our team it was just him and stefan diggs with four everybody else had three or less including travis kelsey that was before travis kelsey had that ridiculous three or four touchdown game against the Raiders and all of that and man that's a very important part of the offense that we've been missing I mean anytime you lose a first round pick it's gonna impact your team offense defense whoever but this was a guy that not only was a first round pick with high expectations he was also producing and so I mean our offense definitely took a slight step back since he's been gone as far as having another element and another dynamic receiver that can separate against anybody I mean Terry McLaurin should be open more often Curtis Samuel should be open the offense has just run so much more smoothly now Taylor Heineke and Scott Turner I don't know about but I know this skill position core with the receivers we have the tight ends and the running backs most teams in the nfl are definitely jealous of what we have going on skill position wise our offensive line needs to catch up our quarterback situation definitely needs to catch up and scott turner needs to get it together because again there are teams out there with winning records super bowl contenders probably that are jealous of our skill position players i mean imagine if the ravens had our skill positions i mean they have mark andrew but just imagine if the ravens had terry jahan and curtis samuel at receiver antonio gibson and brian robinson at running back they'd probably be undefeated when I mean, the giants are seven and two they would be a way better team with our skill position players i would take our skill position players over the cowboys they're six and three man if the packers had our skill position players they probably wouldn't be four and six i know justin fields would give up one of his lungs to get the skill position players that we have a healthy Jahan dotson makes us one of the more elite skill position groups in the nfl but sadly enough our offense as a whole has been very pedestrian again i blame quarterback more than anything else but scott turner plays a large part in it and our offensive line also plays a large part in it but either way i'm just so happy to have have him back because even right now he's still leading all rookie wide receivers and reception touchdowns with four even though he hasn't played since week four john dodson is also has three touchdowns on three red zone targets so every time he's been targeted in the red zone it's been for a touchdown i mean that level of efficiency is ridiculous and even though again he hasn't played since week four so he's moved down the list as far as receiving touchdowns out of the entire nfl and Devonte adams and travis kelsey are tied for first with eight each 
But John Dotson has just as many touchdown receptions as Tyreek Hill and Justin Jefferson. Now, granted, Justin Jefferson has missed a game, and Tyreek Hill is leading the NFL in receiving yards, but, I mean, John Dotson still has as many receiving touchdowns as DK Metcalf. More than Marquise Brown, more than Tyson Campbell, more than Mike Evans, even though he missed the game as well, even though I believe he's missed a couple of games as well. And then rookie wide receiver-wise, he's ahead of Drake London, who still only has three. Christian Watson just got three in one game, but those are all three of his career so far so John Dawson's still ahead of him as well so it's just so great to get such a dynamic receiver back man again losing the first round pick hurts in itself but when your first round pick is out there doing what Jahan Dotson was doing already in the first four games of his career, losing him really hurt us, honestly. I don't necessarily, I'm not going to necessarily say that Jahan Dotson coming back, we're about to start scoring 40 points a game, but I'm very happy to have him back just in time to play against the undefeated Eagles, the last undefeated team in the NFL. And we're going to talk about that later. But before we get to that, the commanders are not activating star pass rusher Chase Young off IR for tonight's game against the Eagles, tweeted out by Ian Rappaport. Young coming back from an ACL tear is close to being ready, and there's a real chance he makes his debut next week if all goes well at practice this week. Apparently, watch since we practiced indoors this past week, which meant they pulled back on Chase Young a bit. Apparently, Washington practiced indoors this past week, which meant that they pulled back on Chase Young a bit. So, in part because of the caution this week, he won't play tonight. So, because we had to practice indoors today on turf, they're afraid of letting them go out there and play an NFL game because they feel like since they had to dial it back a little bit in practice, they couldn't exactly gauge how ready he is for this upcoming game. But Ian Rappaport said, quote, but Chase Young's time is coming, unquote. Well, first of all, what I take from this is the fact that when you practice indoors, which is on turf instead of grass, the fact that it has this much of an effect on whether a player should play or not returning from an ACL injury is crazy. Again, it's not like Chase Young got hurt on the turf or anything. He had a setback. It's just the fact that since they were practicing on turf, they didn't want to give him a lot of reps and didn't, and they wanted to limit his action in practice to avoid any injuries. But at the same time, NFL owners and just the NFL overall keep acting like turf is the same as playing on grass when clearly it's not because if chase young practice outside and on grass this whole week he may have been playing against the eagles so the nfl could keep acting like turf and grass are the same thing but we clearly know it's not and the commanders are admitting it themselves right now with the way that this chase young situation just happened but as far as optimism goes for Chase Young, Ron Rivera said just a few days ago, Chase Young has made incremental progress this week. We're not going to play him unless we feel like he's absolutely ready to roll. He says that Chase Young has a couple of things he's still uncomfortable doing, but overall they feel like there is an honestly good chance that he could play against the Eagles. But now that presents me to... Should we just go ahead and sit Chase Young for the rest of the season and not even risk it? My boy Josh Taylor on Twitter did a survey. 52% of people answered yes and 48% of people answered no out of 123 votes. I'm curious about how y'all feel about it. Please get in the comment section and let me know how y'all feel about whether Chase Young should just sit for the rest of the season. It's not even worth it. Because first of all, the defense is not the problem. Our defense is playing at a Super Bowl contender level. Our defense is better than most of the elite teams above us right now. And especially now that we're starting to finally force turnovers. And then we fix the third down problem that we were having last year and this year's preseason. Benjamin St. Juice is stepping up big time. I mean, you saw what Justin Jefferson just did against that elite Bills secondary. He had a good game against us, but he ain't do all of that. Benjamin St. Juice is becoming a problem at corner, man. I'm not afraid of him having to cover really anybody at this point. I mean, especially the taller guys. Jamin Davis is learning. Cole Holcomb had his best game of his season, but he's been gone the past couple of games. But the last game he played for us a few weeks ago was the best game he had all season. When we get him back, the defense is only going to improve. The defensive line is doing everything they need to do. Deron Payne is having a career year. He already has more sacks at this point halfway through the season than he's ever had in an entire season at any point in his career. Jonathan Allen's playing at an all-pro level. Everybody in the rotation. Jane Smith Williams, Casey Tuhill, FL, Bada, everybody's stepping up big. John Ridgeway, outside of that dumb penalty at the end of that Vikings game, he's played fairly well being that double team eater that runs stuff up the middle we bring him in at nose tackle occasionally Kendall Fuller is coming off of his best game by far this season I feel like and Bobby McCain and Cameron Curl and Derek Forrest are starting to get into somewhat of a rhythm and remember pro football focus feels like Cameron Curl is the best safety in the NFL and that Derek Forrest is the fourth best safety in the NFL so pro football focus feels like we have the best safety tandem in the entire NFL 
The defense is not the problem. I would love to have Chase Young back, and I think Chase Young would take this defense to an even higher level to where we're not talking top seven defense. We're talking top three and arguably number one. Again, our biggest problem on defense right now is forcing turnovers, but we started to do that a little bit more recently, but at the same time, Chase Young is a strip sack master. One thing about him that you can say definitively that he does better than anybody else on this team is getting the ball out of the quarterback's hands for strip sacks and things like that. He just has a knack for doing that. And also, I mean, just an additional element of pressure and athleticism on the field and just getting to the quarterback quicker for some mistakes maybe that leads to more interceptions and so chase young can only make this defense better but at the same time the defense is not the reason we're losing all of these games it's the offense straight up it's quarterback scott turner and offensive line whatever order you want to put it in to me it's quarterback then offensive line then scott turner but they all share a lot of the blame the defense has played well enough since after the lions game to really go undefeated since after that completely the offense so that's an argument for why it's not even necessary to bring Chase Young back and force him back. First of all, I mean, we still are in the running for making the playoffs, but do you really want to risk Chase Young being hurt even longer term and having like a career ending type of injury for a season that, I mean, we're last place in the NFC East firmly. And again, we're still not technically out of the playoff race and there's still a good chance that for some reason, our offense can finally get it together. Our defense continues to play how they're playing. We can go on a crazy win streak and finish this year off and get one of those last playoff spots but say if we don't and chase young re-aggravates his injury and now we lost him until next november december in 2023 worst case scenario scares me more than the potential of making the playoffs makes me happy i feel like the negative risk outweighs the positive reward for me personally but i still would love to see chase young out there and if the doctors and the training staff feel like he honestly can go out there and be 100 himself and not have to worry about his leg then do it but boy i'm definitely afraid and then also we got to think about chase young's fifth year option because we're gonna have to pick that up this off season it's probably gonna be somewhere maybe below around 17 million and of course we're gonna have to pick it up and then soon after that if not during that negotiation process on whether we're gonna do that or not we need to start talking to chase young his agent about potentially signing him long term but we just feel like we haven't necessarily seen enough from him on the field yet to know what we want to do with them so maybe that may play into the decision of let's just go ahead and throw him out there this year to see if we can truly trust them long term i mean i feel like we're gonna end up paying chase young we probably should anyway even if he doesn't play a single game this season and we just shut him down but it's a really interesting question to keep in the back of your mind with this whole chase young situation that fifth year option is coming up this offseason and then shortly after that we're talking long-term contracts and we still got Montez Sweat. We still got Deron Payne, who's an unrestricted free agent after this season. Cameron Curl, Cole Holcomb. A lot of these guys' contracts are coming up. It's getting really interesting. Now to the main part of the video, the Commanders and Eagles injury report. And who's in, who's out. As of right now, we already know on the Commander side, linebackers Cole Holcomb and David Mayo are out once again. So, Jamin Davis, if you remember against the Vikings, I talked about this in the video. Jamin Davis, I believe, played like 85% of the snaps. John Bostick played like 35% or something like that. No other linebacker touched the field. So there were times where we at most had one linebacker on the field, like the majority of the game, the vast majority of the game. We just brought in an extra DB or we brought in the extra defensive lineman and John Ridgeway to play nose tackle. Also, J.D. McKissick with his neck injury is out. And I mean, I love J.D. McKissick, but with this new Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson one-two punch, he hasn't been much of a factor in the offense anyway which i feel like is a mistake i feel like we should still have jd mckissick involved in some way even if you run out there with antonio gibson and jd mckissick and then before the snap you motion jd mckissick to go into the slot or like out wide or something and dare a linebacker to cover him especially on like a third and three or something like that but we still don't have him this center tyler larson is questionable he was limited in thursday's practice did not participate in fridays and then limited in saturday's practice but maybe he will play and then Andrew Norwell was good until he didn't participate in Saturday's practice and now he's questionable so our technically even though Tyler Larson is technically a backup but our starting center for the past couple of games is questionable and our starting left guard is also questionable but thank goodness and good news we get Jahan Dotson back and then the Eagles injury report has a lot of names on it but it looks like everybody is good to go 
The only people that are out are cornerback Josh Joby and cornerback Avante Maddox. And both of them are hamstring injuries, interesting enough, which is something that David Mayo's dealing with right now and what Jahan Dawson is just coming back from. Them hamstrings are serious, bro. That's what kept Cole Turner out for forever until now he's dealing with the concussion injury situation. But those are the only players out for the Eagles. Their injury report has like 20 names on it. Ours only has six, but out of our six guys on the injury report, three are out. Out of like the 20 on their injury report, only two are out. So, I mean, that's just how it goes, man. Also, Carson Wentz Rivera two days ago updated his situation and said that he's able to throw the ball lightly. Now, I'm team throw Sam Howell out there and see what he can do before we get to the draft. That's my main priority right now, honestly. But if Carson Wentz is healthy enough to come back, again, with this offensive line, with how bad it's been, with him being a statue, I feel like in a clean pocket, Carson Wentz is the better quarterback between him and Taylor Heineke. But the realistic situation is this offensive line will not give you a clean pocket as much as you need one. So Taylor Heineke is the better quarterback between him and Carson Wentz with how bad this offensive line has been at protecting the quarterback. I think it's actually quite obvious. Again, with the clean pocket, I think Carson Wentz is definitely the better quarterback. But right now, we got to go with Taylor Heineke because our offensive line is trying to willy beaming people from any given Sunday. Also, shouts out to Darren Haynes from WUSA9. He put up a very interesting stat on Twitter. He said the average amount of wins before the last undefeated team loses each season in NFL history is 7.5s. So they're 8-0. It's time for them to go ahead and lose this game real quick. Go ahead and repeat history. Put everything back in its natural order. So it sounds like we're destined to win, but we'll see. Also, before we go, Terry McLaurin with 260 catches right now needs only two catches to pass Gary Clark for the most by a Washington player through four seasons. And we still have a lot of games left, so that's great to hear, man. Terry McLaurin is going to break a lot of Washington records throughout his career. So I'm expecting Terry McLaurin to definitely beat that by the end of this game there's no way terry mcclellan only needs two catches and we don't do that he needs a minimum of double digit targets and when you throw it to terry mcclellan enough he's gonna catch most of them period but at the same time Jahan dodson is coming back but if anything that's just gonna help terry mcclellan stay open so hey man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please leave a like on this video if you liked it and learned anything definitely let me know how you feel about the chase young situation on whether or not we should just go ahead and shut him down for the rest of the season and not risk it and let me know how you feel about everything Jahan dodson returning all of the injuries that we're dealing with on the eagle side and the commander side and of course, man, I appreciate all of the support, man. Shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors. The name you see scrolling on the screen right now. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out.